So today I'm going to be painting and assembling this mini bike kit. This is the Azusa mini bike kit with 8 inch wheels. The link in the description will be below. You can buy your own. I found the cheapest one online at $320 and that comes with everything except for the paint, the engine, and the clutch. So everything you see here is what doesn't come with the Azusa mini bike kit and basically I have um, some mineral spirits and this is going to be to clean the metal and prep it for painting. These are just a few steel wool pads or you can use like 320 grit sandpaper and basically once I clean it I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to scratch it and get it just some small scratches all over the bike so that the paint can grip to it a lot better. Or you can use yet again 320 grit sandpaper also works really well. I just have some gloves, a rag, and then I have my primer, my paint, and my clear coat. Basically what I'm going to do is, after I get done cleaning all the metal, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to prime it, and I'm going to paint it with this gloss protective enamel. And I'm using enamel because it's a really strong, it comes with a really hard finish to it. And then the clear coat is also crystal clear enamel, so that's going to really help protect the paint so this paint job can last for years and years to come. And basically I picked up one of these, it's just a, uh, it connects your, any type of your uh, spray paint cans, put it on, it's a little bit easier to apply the spray paint. This is only like two or three bucks, so it was worth it. Now let's go ahead and look at the engine. This is a Harbor Freight, this is from Harbor Freight I should say, 212 cc, six and a half horsepower, you can pick these up for around a hundred dollars. Basically, they're always on sale. So if you pay more than a hundred for one of these things, then I think you're doing something wrong. So you can always get these really cheap. They're basically a Honda clone, and they work really well if you treat them well. And on the other side here, a few notes to take is that an engine has this engine has a three-quarter inch shaft. So what I did was I picked up a centrifugal clutch which is a three quarter inch bore in it and then you just slide it on and you put a bolt in the end of the shaft and it holds it so basically when the engine starts the shaft is going to be spinning so the inside is going to be spinning but this outside piece will not be spinning until you reach a certain amount of RPMs this will engage with the whole clutch and it will spin the chain which is connected to your sprocket and then your back wheel will spin as well so when you give the engine gas this is going to it's going to lock in and it's going to go ahead and spin your back wheel. And basically what I also did was I took a spring and I connected it. I drilled a small hole in the muffler and I connected it to the throttle so that when I pull this back, the throttle will snap back in place just like that. Otherwise, if I don't have that there, then there's a chance that the throttle would just stick and I'd be stuck going like 20 miles an hour down the road without any control. So I just put that there just in case and now we're all ready to go ahead and start painting the kit. So this isn't my most ideal paint setup, but it will have to do. So I'm going to start with my primer and you want to do really light coats on everything and try to do this inside if you can, but I just don't have a place where I can do it. So I have to be outside. Here we go. So the primer's all dry, I'm gonna go ahead and take this Rust-Oleum Gloss Protective Enamel, and this is the color that I'm painting it, a bright red, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply that to the frame. That looks so sweet when you blow it in here. I feel like this is way thick, oh, totally nice. Oh, dude, that's gonna look baller. It's my favorite part, you see? I mean, they just made it. <laughs> exactly. They don't know crap. They make it, they don't use it. No. <laughs> 
So the first thing I'm going to do is inflate this inner tube to about 1 to 2 PSI and I'm going to actually put it inside this rubber before I do that just to get it started. So now this tire is inflated just a little bit and what I can do is I can take one rim and I want to take this, set it here, align it, and now I have it like this and I'll take the other rim, sandwich it together and using bag B with the 5 16 inch bolt, I think this is, it's definitely bag B, I'm going to go ahead and take these, thread it through and lock them all tight. So where's all the stuff that came with? On that box, basically. And now it's at 15 PSI. Don't forget to put on the cap. And we're all set with the front tire. Oh. All right, so now I'm gonna be doing the rear tire. And basically, I just like the first one, I inflated the tube up to like 2 or 3 PSI. And I'm going to take the one that just has the regular mounts. I'm going to take it, put it in here, and I'll let that be for a minute. Now what I'm going to do with the other rim that has all the mounting holes for the sprocket is, first off, I'm going to remove the brake from the sprocket and just set it aside for now. Now what I did was, I took, some, I took the 5 16 inch nuts, lock nuts, and I put them in here and now what I have to do is before I attach the 5 16 inch bolts that are a quarter an inch and a quarter long I need to first take these bolts that mount the tire together just like the front one and I need to slide them through but I'm not going to be attaching it quite yet first before I do that I have to take the sprocket now Put it on here, line it up with these inside holes, and using these screws or bolts, I will bolt it in to these these uh, nuts right here, and I should be all set. So I'm gonna go ahead, tighten all this up, and then I will come back when I'm putting this all into like a sandwich on the wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up real quick. So I guess it's all set up here. The sprockets tightened on to the bolts that are in here and now what I'm going to go ahead and do is take these bolts and I'm going to feed them through onto this rim just like I did last time sandwich it and then tighten it on the other side and then fully inflate the tire to 15 psi so now I just got done tightening down these bolts so it's all there together one thing to note is that this should be on it shouldn't be on the sprocket side because if it's on the side of the sprocket you're going to have a hard time getting your air into the tire so put it on this side where it's all open and just really easy to access so now I'm gonna go ahead set this up and inflate it to 15 PSI So I'm all done painting, I primed, painted, then I clear coated, and this is over about a week's time. So it's all dry and I'm fully confident that it's ready to be assembled. And you don't want to put it together too early because you might chip off your paint and wreck your paint job. So just have some patience and just put it together slowly. And uh, now I'm ready to basically, I want to make this a rolling chassis. So what I did was, I put a cooler under here, you can use blocks of wood or something like that. You just want to have something that bumps it up, so when you go to put your wheels on, your wheels will be sitting, but they're not touching the ground, so then it's rolling and falling over and whatnot. And I put a sheet down to protect the paint job on it. So basically I'm going to take this front fork, and I'm going to attach it right here, just by using the bolt that they give me, and it comes out of this brown packaging.
basically there's three bolts in here and you have this one which is your back axle it's the longest one then you have your front axle which is the shortest one and then you have one that comes with this lock nut on it and that's just going to slide right on through there and that's how your front fork is held on and I'm actually going to go ahead and add some grease to this bolt because I want to have a really nice smooth transition even though it might not be moving I just want to make sure and it will also prevent against rust inside here as well so it doesn't hurt I'm gonna go ahead and attach the front fork now